Hi, I'm Todd Heitkamp, the owner of Dakota Angler here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, with this week's Two Minute Fishing Report. Okay, folks, well, I guess some of you didn't take my advice and my request last week to continue to live right because obviously some of you went off track a little bit. And speaking of going off the track, the weather was a result off the track. Boy, you talk about a really a washed up uh, weekend and no pun intended. Uh, but it really made fishing quite difficult around the area this past weekend. It's really too bad to, for it to affect the free fishing weekend, but that's just the way it goes. We know we all can't control Mother Nature. Some guys did go out before the storm, uh, you know, late last week as well as uh, late on Sunday and had some decent success out there as far as walleye is concerned. Up in the northeastern uh, part of the state, those lakes continue to, to do well up there, continue to be Indian Springs, Bitter, Wabe, uh, Horseshoe, Enemy Swim, as well as Pickerel and Compesca. And then down the southeastern part, the, the lakes continue to do fairly well, depending on the day, include uh, Thompson, Ponson, uh, Henry, uh, Sinai, Oakwood, both east and west, and then also 81 Ponds, Diamond, Island, and Madison. Now, what have guys been using to catch those walleyes? A lot of guys are still using jigs and live bait. And minnows, uh, the main thing. Also, leeches now have seen to, to be taken off a little bit. Other guys are using uh, bottom bouncers and spinners, and mainly one-hook spinners with uh, uh, leeches or uh, minnows. Some guys now are switching over to two-hook uh, and using the crawler, but also guys are using some slow death spinners out there, slow death presentations, and uh, really uh, working well. And I will be talking about that during Todd's Tackle Tips. Other things, uh, guys are also using plugs. Guys are using some shad wraps uh, as well as some uh, Lindy Wally demons, demons and uh, coming away with some decent success uh, and decent sized fish with using uh, plugs out there on the area lakes. Now as far as uh, the panfish bite is concerned, the weather really affected the panfish bite this past weekend. Guys were catching a few crappies and I emphasize few uh, at Thompson, Sinai, Ponset as well as Elvin. And what they've been using this past weekend, again, a lot of guys using the shiny heinies, as well as uh, any type of small jig, and then also the road runners. Guys are coming away with some decent crappies. But again, the weather definitely affected that crappie bite. In this week's version of Todd's Tackle Tips, we're, folks, we're going to talk about slow death rigs. And we've talked about this before, but it continues to be one of the most deadly presentations as far as walleyes are concerned when you're out there trolling. A lot of guys have been, been using it and still a number of haven't used it, so I encourage you to try it. And all a slow death rig is, is it's based upon the curl of the hook, the twist of the hook that allows that crawler to spin and entices that walleye bite a little bit more. And you use that alongside a bottom bouncer. And so the key here is when you're using that slow death rig that you only, when you're talking about live crawlers, you only take a half of that crawler, pinch the other crawler off and save it for later on and feed the crawler up past the eyelet of the hook and leave a little of the tail of that crawler dangling off the back side of that hook and that will allow that hook to sit there and spin as you're going along at let's say right around two miles an hour and that's key as far as that uh, that speed of the troll and you can figure right around two miles an hour is going to be the ideal speed now there are a number of different uh, slow death rigs out there uh, the one we just talked about is this basically the slow uh, the basic slow death rig other companies, such as JB, has a Slow Death Plus, which has a metal prop on it and different colors of props. And then also Max Lures have uh, used the Max Blade along with the Slow Death Rig, a Slow Death Hook, and that again just entices those props, entice that walleye bite. So there are a number of different ways that you can use this. You can also use not only uh, real crawlers, live crawlers, you can use the artificial kind. Uh, and two companies come out with, have come out with crawlers specific for the slow death rigs. And that's from uh, Berkeley, the Gulp, as well as the Northland version, the Impulse Bait. Each one of them uh, have a half crawler, or what they call a slow death crawler, if you will. Uh, there's a number of different uh, t colors and types. You can use them that are made specifically to be used for the slow death rig, and you don't have to worry about the live bait option. But honestly, in my experience, the live bait seems to be working a little bit better than the artificial. But if you're going up to Canada, or if you may run out of live bait, the artificial is always a great fallback measure to keep in mind. So if you have any questions about how to use the slow death rig and all the different options that are out there on the market, stop on by here at the store, and we'll even show you the artificial crawlers that can be used with the slow death rigs. Now it's time to take a look at a few photos that you sent in to me this past week.
remember, folks, if you'd like your photo included in next week's version of the Two Minute Fishing Report, please send it to me. Send it to Todd at DakotaAngler.com or post it to our Facebook wall. And if I use your photo, your name will be entered into a monthly drawing for a $25 gift certificate. Well, folks, before we end this uh, week's report, I want to remind you of a couple of things. Since uh, the free fishing weekend was basically a washout, uh, what we're going to do is extend some of the sales that we had going uh, for that weekend into the Memorial Day weekend. So uh, from all of us to all of you, uh, happy Memorial Day weekend and happy graduation for a lot of you that are uh, out there in Minnesota and Iowa and some of the area of South Dakota schools. And then other than that, the other thing I want to bring to your attention is that folks, that we continue to struggle with the uncertainty of the non-meandering water bill. Uh, it still affected a lot of the area lakes and then no matter how you feel, one way or the other, I encourage you to reach out to your area legislators and, and make sure that they're aware of how you feel one way or the other, either side of the issue, and then also reach out to the task force. I encourage you to do that as well. And you can find all that information on, the, on many of the state websites uh, state government websites to find out where those area legislature, le legislators are located and how to reach them. So I encourage you to do that. If you have any questions about any of the sales that we have going on here, anything we can do to help you out, feel free to give us a call at 605-336-9132. Well folks, that's this week's version of the Two Minute Fishing Report. For Dakota Angler, I'm the owner Todd Highcamp, and as we say around here, fish on! We'll see you next time, and again, thanks for watching, and happy Memorial Day.